The 90s were a very interesting time in America. Home video game consoles had just started becoming popular, grunge was taking over the music scene, and the internet didn't really exist in the way that it does for us today. So, the way people consumed entertainment was much different. How'd you watch movies without Netflix? Blockbuster. How'd you buy video games without an online marketplace? GameStop. Power to the cuties. That's right, I'm talking about you schnookums. How'd you tell your friends about your theory that the sun's rotation helped Mario escape Installation 08 with Arbiter before Discord and Skype. And I don't know why Mario is in Halo 3, it's just a fact. And back to my point, you did it with your mouth. Now for most of these products, services, and businesses, advertising was critical. And that's where commercials come into play. Now before virtually free ad campaigns were a thing with the internet like Nugs for Carter and IHOB, rest in peace, there were four archetypes for retro commercials. And it's important that we highlight the word commercials because while television slots were hitting homers in the big leagues, online ads were doing a good job. You'll get a next time, little guy. Go get some big league chew. See the difference? So with that beautiful analogy put into place, let's move on to the four types of retro commercials. First of all, the classic sing-along and jingle. I'm taking my classes online, getting my degree on my own. Education connection match me with the right college for free. Get connected for free with education connection. Next, you had the wacky voices for kids with weird camera angles. Sound up, sound up. XP90 Pulse Fire. Hear the sound of the Super Soldier XP90 Pulse Fire with pulsating action that delivers. Third at bat. We had the live action and animated mashed together, which just led to some hilarious acting from little kids. Imagine trying to act like a wacky tiger is doing some crazy stuff in front of you when it's really just a set full of old dudes. And lastly, we have my personal favorite category, and the category and the commercials that really influenced me to make this video, the viral marketing campaigns. From Got Milk short convoluted skits. Tom, can I make a suggestion? You're fired! <laughs> Welcome to eternity. Flowers grow Heaven. <laughs> no! Wait a minute. Where am I? Wendy's cute little grandma's blowing our eardrums out. Where's Viral marketing campaigns helped many companies come into our homes and our mouths. <laughs> come to think of it, there's also a fifth category that's worth mentioning. A very unique category, an impregnable category, a category that one commercial has ever made it into a category that you wouldn't even know existed. The original N64 Super Smash Bros. commercial. God damn, that was good. <laughs> Something's gone wrong in the happy-go-lucky world of Nintendo. Introducing Super Smash Brothers, where all your favorite characters go toe-to-toe -to -toe in one four-player star-studded slam fest only on Nintendo 64. Now, we're going to get back to some of the best viral ads in just a minute, but first we need to look back at commercials and TV as a whole, then compared to now. The 90s were a wacky, crazy, inflatable, hungry, hungry hippos time for America, if you will. Reagan just pulled us out of a depression, the economy's booming, and big business had more money than a hog on a Tuesday. <laughs> So with businesses having a butt ton of money and people having a butt ton of money, it was time to buy some shit. Toward the end of the 90s, hundreds of billions were being spent on TV advertising, which meant every single commercial slot was extremely coveted. You had commercials aimed at kids, teens, adults, the elderly, dogs, gingerbread men, anything with button eyes and a gumdrop nose had a damn commercial for it. With so many ads flooding the market and consequentially ad spots being so expensive, companies had to make sure they were getting their bang, bang for their 10-point ten ten point buck. Is it, is it funny that I just keep putting side-by-sides of, of me and another YouTuber who's much funnier and better and, and bigger than me? Is, is this my thing now? I just work in some jokes that aren't even mine? Do you guys even enjoy this? Do you even love me? Sorry for that outbreak. Let's get back to the viral marketing campaigns. First one up, what's that? Now, if you don't understand that horrific noise I just made, there's two reasons. Two only, no other explanations. You're either too young, or you were in a terrible coma 
from 1999 to 2003. On December 20th, 1999, Budweiser aired a commercial during a game of Monday Night Football. A commercial that barely makes sense to this day, but swept the nation off its feet like Donkey Chong and Princess Patch. What the? I went from a one-off commercial that was just meant to be loud to get your attention, which sounds oddly familiar, to an ad campaign that lasted three and a half years and became a pop culture catchphrase all across the nation. And that was the nature of virality before the internet. You needed something simple, funny, and recognizable for people to pass on by word of mouth, and that's exactly what Wala was. Hey, what's happening, B? Nothing, just chilling, watching the game, having a bud. What's up with yeah, Hold on a second. Hello? What's that? <laughs> Yo, hold up. Hello? Hello? So what's up, B? Nothing. Watching the game, having a bud. Thank you! Now on to my favorite ad campaign of all time, Grey Poupon. Pardon me, would you have any Grey Poupon? But of course. Hey, wait, can I have some? Grey Poupon was a mustard that entered the condiment market a little late. They had to compete with the likes of French's, Heinz, and, and all the other companies, and to do that, the marketing team had to get creative. And that's where the Grey Poupon commercials came in. Let me explain the concept to you. So you charge a little bit extra, a 50% margin for your mustard. You make it seem like only the rich of the rich can pay for it. You make a commercial campaign where only the rich of the rich are eating it. And then that creates two subgroups, people that despise the rich of the rich and their mustard, and people that want to be the rich of the rich and their mustard. And the people that want to be it, buy it and realize that the opportunity cost really isn't that bad. And then they spread the word of mouth for you. The, mar the marketing campaign does amazing, and the people that despise it now want it, and everybody eats your fucking mustard. Did you get all that? But the commercials took on a completely different life of their own, and at stoplights across America, you would meme on your fellow motorists every day, and if you got to roll up next to a white Rolls Royce, you struck meme gold, sir. The company behind the viral commercials and the whole marketing campaign realized this, and here and there, without warning, just dropped new commercials that kind of exacerbated the same point and were really hyperbolic and funny, but the best thing about them was they were self-aware, which kind of like personalized the whole thing for you. It wasn't a company just trying to shove their product down your throat. They were they were memeing right back with you, and that was, it's really nice. These commercials were popular from the early 80s all the way up until the 2000s. There was a new one that dropped in like 2012 after like a decade of none of them dropping. It was also incredibly popular in pop culture. It was probably one of the, if not the, most referenced food product in all of rap history, especially old school rap, because not only was it a symbol of like wealth or like a meme symbol of wealth, but it was like a joke that would like personalize stuff for your audience. Everyone likes to be in on a joke. And I think that's why the commercial succeeded so much. It was in movies like Wayne's World and TV shows like Married with Children. It was probably one of the most effective ad campaigns ever. And it's because of the personalization and like the self-awareness of it. It made it feel like the company was advertising with you and not at you, even though that makes no sense. But you know the sentiment that I'm trying to get across. Now that I'm done gushing about some dang mustard, whether it be a pre-roll, a mid-roll, a sidebar ad, a bumper ad, a movie preview, a TV commercial, a good advertisement knows its target audience, is short and sweet, and doesn't take itself too seriously. While some ads are just annoying clutter on your monitor or interrupt your favorite show, other ads can really introduce you to something really, really dope. Like the Believe ads did for millions in 2006 and 2007 for Halo and Master Chief and brought Bungie some of its best sales that it's ever seen or ever will see, and did this just turn into another Halo video? What? If you hear this music playing right now, this is gonna be like outro music, but I don't really want an outro or like a dubstep anthem or anything. So like, Claire, who's someone I met on Reddit and through this whole YouTube thing, one of the only people I've met that is kind of just like genuinely nice and sweet through this whole thing. Um, she decided that she just wanted to make a song for me to use in my video, so here we go. It's basically my outro song. If you hear it come on, it kind of signals the last minute or so of the video. I think it's really dope. All her stuff is down below. Her Spotify link and her Twitter, if there's anything else, I'll throw it down there too. It's gonna be in the bottom of all of my 
my videos because this music is pretty dope. All I'm ever going to ask for you is if you enjoyed the video, if you liked it, drop a like. That's what it's there for and it helps me out. If, you, if there was something specifically you laughed at, enjoyed, whatever, you can comment it to me. I'm, I've literally probably responded to every comment I've ever got on the channel because I don't get that many of them. Um, I genuinely really appreciate it. I love making videos like this, but more so I love the community and interacting with you guys, like genuinely from the bottom of my heart.